the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has collapsed after being struck by a container ship, the Dali. What do we actually know and why did this happen? After examining some of the footage, there are questions that need to be answered here. And some of it seems a bit strange. What we do know is the container ship, the Dali, struck the Baltimore Bridge on one of its supporting pillars. So the Dali was on course to leave Baltimore heading to Sri Lanka. And something went wrong. The ship lost power. It flickered back on. You saw the lights come back on. And it lost power again. And it struck one of the bridge pillars, causing the entire bridge to collapse, which still had running traffic on it. People lost their lives as they plunged into the freezing waters of the Patapsco River near Baltimore. The bridge completely collapsed, partially across the front of the container ship that struck it, blocking the entire harbour, closing the port of Baltimore. Black Swan event or perfect storm? That's the question. First of all, looking at the video, most people that have seen the video have seen a sped up version. The ship didn't move as quickly as that. It didn't veer as quickly as that. In the sped up version, it all looks way too controlled and convenient. If you look at it in real time, it took a little bit of time for such a big container ship traveling at 13 knots to actually strike the pillar and bring the bridge down. What happened to the container ship that would cause this? Because container ships have multiple backup systems. Even if you lose all power, there should be enough battery storage to ensure that some kind of control over the steering is still there. I'm not a ship expert, but I do know some things about boating and shipping and boats are quite adversely affected by crosswinds, of which there was one. And according to the weather service, there were gusts of up to 15 to 20 knots around the time when it struck the bridge. That crosswind would have pushed it towards that pillar if it had lost steerage. And of course, if it had lost power completely and it was no longer under power, and if it had lost complete engine power, it would have veered quicker because it wouldn't be being driven forward. It was a new pilot, apparently. I don't think that has much bearing on the scene. There are some wild conspiracy theories raising their heads already, such as he, he caused an EMP that knocked out all the power on the ship. Well, would you have any idea how big that would need to be? This ship's like 400 metres long and 30 metres wide. You know, if you have a pocket EMP device that you've made from a taser or something, you're going to affect something that's maybe, if you're lucky, within one or two metres off you. He's not going to knock out all the ship's system by going around with a modified taser, going zzz, zzz, zzz. not going to happen. And he's not bringing a van-sized pinch on board that can affect the whole size, the whole ship in one go. I think that's out there as far as theories go. There are other theories, and of course, our good friend and currently remanded awaiting trial, Mr. Tate, says it's a cyber attack. With no basis, no evidence, just it's a cyber attack, America's installations are being attacked by foreign powers. Yeah, really? Show us the evidence. Those that make extraordinary claims need to back it up. That's an extraordinary claim, Andrew, even for you. So, back in your box, await your trial, then come back when you've got some evidence. Not impressed. Not helpful. And remember... People died here. People died during this. And that's another point. Why did people die? Because the CNN report says that people, the, the emergency service started receiving calls around 1.30 a.m. that a ship had struck the bridge. But if you look at the video, there's quite clearly a number of police cars or emergency vehicles stationary on the bridge with red lights going well before the ship strikes it traffic was still flowing. This is a major route. It's part of the interstate system, I believe. So it's a four-lane highway. Why, were, why was traffic still allowed to travel if they thought there was a chance of this ship hitting the bridge? Because why else would four or five police vehicles or emergency vehicles be sitting on top of the bridge? They wouldn't be sightseeing, not on a major four-lane highway. So what's going on there? 
Were the police informed by the harbour master, by the pilot, by the ship's crew that they were having problems and that there may be a chance that the vehicle was going to hit the bridge? That's possible. In fact, is that not more likely? And when you saw the ship hit the bridge, the whole bridge came down. And you have to remember that it's a stressed steel structure, so as soon as you remove even just a few vital parts, you're putting much more stress on the parts that are left. And again, how old is that bridge? It's quite an old bridge. How well has it been maintained? And in fact, the city's already said they'll be investigating the condition of the bridge pre-accident as well as after to ensure that it was as strong as it should have been. So there are questions here. But I don't think they're unanswerable questions and I really don't think that this is a concerted attack on America. I think this is an accident, a perfect storm if you will. Things went wrong, the ship was in the wrong place at the wrong time, there was a crosswind, it lost power, it veered into the pillar of the bridge, the bridge collapsed and people died. An accident, these things do happen. I don't think we need to go into this in much more depth on this video. But if you think I'm wrong and you think it is all a conspiracy and America is under attack, let me know. Because as you know, I'm open to all ears.